Hey y'all, I wanted to show you the setup that I made for my uh, oil uh, bypass for my 6.0. Uh, it's DIY, I did it myself. Uh, basically replicated all the expensive ones that I've seen um, for uh, easy and cheap. Anyway, so I'm gonna start off. Here's the filter I'm gonna use. I bought this here base to match with it. I made the mistake of buying just any one that I thought would work. Because if you can see, they are different in, in threads and the diameter here. So for this filter here, you'll have to, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, you'll have to buy the one that comes with this. So I'm sorry, with the with the right amount of, uh, the right thread so it fits on here. I ended up buying uh, these here and they are 6A and flare to 1 8 NPT adapter. These are the 6A and flare. This one right here too. Uh, these are the, the 1 8 NPTs right here and so I'll describe them we'll go over to the truck to show you for the return oil this is what I did I took off my pipe oil fill pipe I drilled it with the drill bit that was just a little bit smaller than the diameter of the 1 8 NPT uh, let me show you as you can see there's enough thickness to that wall that it'll get a good bite on there see that and then on top of that, I'm still going to put some, some JV Weld. Uh, braided hoses just for looks. So this braided hose is going to be going in here, right there. This goes onto the 1 8th MPT. And then this <clears throat> this way. And there. And then this goes in here. And those are the connectors. So let me go and show you how to scrap how this is. Oh, can't forget. This is where my... This here filter mount is going to be mounted on to here. There you go. Just like that. And then I'm going to be putting the oil. The actual oil filter is going to be going behind this thing. So we remove this here. I have removed the bolt before this, this video. So there's clips at the bottom. There's these screws right there took them off clips at the bottom there is out so the actual oil filter is going to be this thing it's gonna th these actually these holes are going to be going under this right there so i got bigger longer bolts to replace these this is going to go under that and then this basically ends up like this somehow like that so that's how I'm gonna be able to keep my oil filter. So it'll also add to cooling the oil somewhat for staying up here up front. And there's plenty of room. So I'll show you after, obviously. Um, so basically, I what I did before I did all this is I went ahead and I added, uh, so we have a high uh, side pressure H-pop and then a low side pressure. This is low oil pressure right here. So I added a low uh, oil pressure monitoring gauge because i wanted to monitor my pressures before the filter and after the filter so before the filter right now i'm getting about when i first started up when it's cold i'm getting about uh, 60 to 80 psi on the low side when it heats up then it goes down to about 20 to 26 to uh, more 23 to 26 psi after it's warmed up so clearly after i add the filter i'm going to make sure that those pressures don't drop um and so so this is just a um I'll give the description about this, or maybe I'll do another video on how I added this, but basically I bought it this, separate it. This is 1 8 MPT as well. This goes out to an uh, analog and digital gauge. It's a combination. I like those. Looks awesome inside. So now this is where I'm going to feed the oil right here. It's going to come out, uh, go into my oil filter here, get filtered, come back out, and then go back into the return pipe right there. So that's the setup. Let me, let me put it all together for you so I can show it to you. Uh, I'll put together. So here's the pipe. Actually came out really good. Let's see if we can see the inside. I let it poke out just a little bit. I mean, any more that pokes out really, it's not gonna do much. Um, and then I used the uh, JV Weld. And this is actually a, um, like hardened plastic. So when it bites, it bites really, really hard, really strong. 
and uh, I mean I could probably bang it and it won't break at all JV weld here's a one thing I wanted to point out to you guys when you're unscrewing this uh, left to loose righty tighty when you're screwing it be careful because in that hole uh, it has this seal which looks like it's sort of like a crappy seal from one side it's gonna fall falling apart the other side looks like good the good side was like this so although it sits in the outside of the threads and the hole it looks like it's just like a sealant so no smoke comes out when you're uh, pulling it out be careful so that if it has little particles that is broken it they don't fall inside of the hole where the valve covers um are so i am going i cleaned it up really good i took out whatever was loose um obviously the thing to do is to buy a new one but i didn't want to wait so i cleaned it up i flipped it instead of like this inside out like that so the crappy part which is cleaned up it's going to be inside now and do that real quick sorry i'm using my hand here so it'll go on like that anyways i can't do it with one hand I'll go like that and i'll thread it back in so i'm doing that right now just wanted to show you guys um it's pretty solid piping if you if you break this for some reason then just go to the junkyard and find it. these are the same ones that the v10s use the gas engine v10s and any of these also I, i'm very, very sure they use it for other engines uh but you probably paid two bucks for this for this one of these at the junkyard and you just unscrew it with your bare hands um what else did i want to tell you right so i use my i i as i said i use a drill bit to drill the hole kind of like a little smaller than this and then i use my my uh cowboy knife to just kind of myself little by little um make it bigger and then i was testing it with my hand once i felt a little resistance then i used the the uh the closed uh, combination wrench and so i was able to get it in there that way uh, again if you over thread it or, or you, whatever you break or the holes bigger than what you intended to um this um it shouldn't have like a lot of pressure it's just basically gonna pour the oil back in here uh, i'll show you with it when it's just running so you can see the oil just pouring in so i would i would think that if you just use jv weld even if the, your hole here is bigger than this it would hold i'm still gonna take measurements and make sure that the hose is uh, being held somewhere over here to, as well to it so it doesn't ever pops out if it pops out i'm sure you'll just start smoking all kinds of oil so you will know immediately if it ever pops out um but again i'll show you that uh, so you can visually see the pressure that's coming out once it's running once i got it going all right let's get let's put everything back together okay there's the first part of the bracket installed there's the bolts that i was telling you i got these longer bolts which are these m6 that's these bolts right here so it goes in here um there's a bracket let's see if you can okay you can't see it it goes down in there i'm gonna put some more tv there just to it doesn't touch at all but and this is just flat bar by the way i made this bracket myself there's the screws in the back this is a flat bar uh, i painted it blue but bent it myself drilled it my, my myself uh probably i think i paid like three bucks for a five foot long piece of flat bar that i was able to bend myself i got it that where i can bend it myself uh but not like too too um weak that it'll bend itself uh so here i put um this uh i skipped my mind um teflon tape but i made sure that it was like from it was just a little bit i didn't put anything over here in the front of it so it doesn't get pulled into the oil um and i'll do the same thing here but i just wanted to show you so this is the 1 8 mpt six so there's my first piece of the the hose that i that i made and that's gonna go on like this there and this is the arrow so this one's gonna go this hose is going to go over there with another one of these elbows. And so the oil will come through here. The other one come out of here and then to the, the return line there that I've made. Again, this one's like awesome, super. I put a little bit of oil there. Everything's clean.
this. Looking pretty good. Let's keep going. All right, so there's the finished product. Comes out of there. Goes here. As the arrow indicates, flow this way. Comes out. Goes in there. Right back in there. Yep. Um, one thing I will note th these are braided hoses so I, I have to be careful I'm not quite happy with how I arranged it by the positive uh, so I can do something about that but anyway so here it is the one thing I did run into uh, heads up which I'm okay with um, when I put the grill back on it does force it out a little bit where is it okay there so you almost can't tell, but I know it's there. Well, I suppose you can. So what I'm going to do is cut a little bit of that piece right there. So I'm going to cut a little bit right there. Not all the way out here because this is, you can tell. But that little extra space, I'm going to cut it. That'll be enough to for it to pop all the way in. But anyways, so people are going to probably ask me, what's in there? And it's going to be a conversation starter. And so uh, the other thing that I did do, I'll start the truck in a bit here and show you the temperatures. Uh, the other thing that I did do uh, purposely is that uh, these braided horses, I'm, hoses, I'm trying to use them so so it can cool off a little bit too. So it'll use a little bit of the air uh, to cool off as well as the filter will also cool off the, the engine oil a little bit. Um, and even if anyone says, oh, they'll actually retain heat, they're not really gonna get hotter than 200 and, or 100 and whatever degrees. Um, so it will help that they're out here and constantly getting flow of air. And uh, so I'll, I'm excited to see what the oil temperatures do. Uh, see if it does affect the oil temperature at all. Anyway, that was my, my theory that it would also help. Um, that and I had a lab with like maybe two feet of excess. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'll coil it, see if it'll do anything. Anyways, let me, I'm going to start it. I'll show you the temperature is cold and, and warm. All right, so let's start it. Jealous, got a green key. Um, that is my uh, low pressure oil gauge. As I said, it should start between 60 and 80 at first. I, I'm interested to see what it's gonna do because it's gotta take a little bit to fill the system with oil. And then I, I'm gonna add more oil, of course, afterwards, but let's see. I'm letting it pressurize. See what my uh, my tuner says with the see if it affects the the H pop. Just starting. Still 79 down here, by the way. So that's my old oil pressure, the the high oil pressure. Let me jump up here so I can show you more. Of my setup while I'm doing this. So, there's my VGT, uh, H pop pressure, All right. the ICP voltage. Uh, I'm gonna change that off for something else. VGT, obviously, Ficom 47, perfect transmission, engine coolant, engine all temperatures. So, all right, so far, still holding at 80. So, let me let me let it warm up. Actually, you know what? It's cool. Yeah, let's go see how we're gonna screw the cap to see if we can see the oil pouring. There's no oil leaks of any kind. Uh, we're gonna just spray the oil together if it's too much.
I may redo that setup only because I, I would like to be able to open it and not have little things uh, blowing up. So I am actually gonna put that fitting a little lower uh, just just for that. So as you can see, the pressure coming out of that is not a whole lot. Uh, it's just basically pouring in there. Look, 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 look pouring in there. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it won't be a near future project, but I will, I will move that down here. I'll move that. So obviously, I'll go to the junkyard, get one of those field tubes, and drill the hole three inches lower. Boom, enough. That way, I can unscrew it. That's pretty cool to see that dumping oil in there. So it is working, guys. Let's go back in here and see the the oil gauge. Still 73. That's not really blinking, but. See, that's why I like the analog and digital. And it's pretty awesome at night. Obviously, there's my fuel gauge. Same, same deal. Beautiful fuel pressure. Got to have that. I'll make a video how to add the fuel. Cool, not bad. So now it's engine has been warmed up. It's back at 23 with the oil bypass. Let me accelerate a little bit. Let's see what it does. It should go up to 80 again. Yeah, nothing. H pop. So we have 600. Accelerate again. I see PPSI. That's it. Comes right back down to six. Where it should be 645. Yep, it's fine. Let's see 26. I'm gonna slow down and come back 20. Yep, see. So the oil pressure did not get affected by the oil bypass. Uh, up on acceleration, the acceleration, nothing changes. Great, there you go. All right, let's use the laser heat gun. Let's see what the conversions are doing. So I'm aiming it at the oil cap. 178. All right, let's see what the, the tuner says. 186. It says my engine oil temperature inside the engine. Um, let's look at this gear. Heat. We did here at the input line 139. Now the return line 126. So. Some cooling is happening for sure. 127. So it's going back up 127 degrees. It's coming out here at this same spot. 143 there. 145. So some cooling is happening here as I anticipated. Uh, and I can tell you that it is, and again, this is unintended. I'm not saying do this in lieu of an, uh, instead of getting a new oil cooler or, or unclogging it or doing a back flush you have to do either back i just did the back flush and it worked wonders for sure i'll do another video on exactly what i did but it definitely worked a thousand percent the oil uh, back flush but anyway so this is un unintended cooling the uh the oil bypass is working perfect i am going to tell you why i know it's working because so let's see my delta is like a degree right now it actually cooled off my oil. I'm gonna tell you probably five to six degrees, I would say, um, because my oil temperatures are normally not that low, even for the same amount of use that I that I just did. Uh, it usually stays about 195, 192, something like that. So it is working. Uh, it is actually cooling by default, uh, just a little bit. Um, anyways, that's my experience. There's. 123, 124, as I said before. There you go. So, uh, oil bypass the way I did it. It also, uh, as default, adds some cooling to the engine oil. 
And so let me make my cut so I can put my my grill back on. Okay, again, real quick, one other thing I wanted to check. I want to remove the engine oil cap and see now that the oil pressure dropped from where it started at 80, now it's down to 23. I want to see what it did to the pressure, the return port line pressure. So you guys saw me take up the cap when it was a, about 80 PSI coming out of there. Let's see if it's still coming out at the same rate so, or, or even worse now. So let's see. Uh, it's not pushing up against me, so it shouldn't explode. Back in there, from here, as it should. Working perfect. There we go. 6.0 engine oil bypass. Inside here, piece of cowboy.